An American fighter jet has crashed during exercises in the South China Sea. Here's what you need to know. A U.S. Navy F-35C Lightning II crashed while attempting to land on the USS Carl Vinson, injuring seven sailors, according to a statement by the U.S. Pacific Fleet Command. The Monday statement said the fighter jet was conducting routine flight operations when the landing mishap occurred, and while the pilot safely ejected from the aircraft and was recovered via U.S. military helicopter, three of the injured sailors had to be evacuated for treatment in the Philippines, where they have been described as stable. The South China Sea has frequently played host to naval activity in recent years as China has asserted claims over almost all of the area by building up and militarizing islands and reefs, while the U.S. has sought to assert its right to operate freely in what are international waters with carrier deployments. As such, the USS Carl Vinson was operating alongside the USS Abraham Lincoln Strike Group on Sunday, having come from a joint exercise with a Japanese helicopter destroyer in the Philippine Sea on Saturday. On the same day, emphasizing the multifaceted struggle for power in the area, China flew 39 planes into Taiwan's air defense identification zone, according to Taiwan's Ministry of National Defense, the second largest such incursion in one day. Of course, as military activity increases, accidents tend to as well, and this was not the first high-profile military accident in the region this month. With a recently upgraded Taiwanese F-16V crashing into the ocean off western Taiwan on January 11th. Air Force Command Headquarters said in a statement cited by Reuters that the F-16V took off from Jiayi Air Base at 2.55 p.m. on a routine training mission before going missing from radar screens at 3.23 p.m. According to Taiwan's National Rescue Command Center, debris from the missing jet was found on January 12th. Suspected remains of the pilot were found the following day. The USS Carl Vinson is also no stranger to accidents, with one widely reported incident coming in 2014, when two F-A-18C Hornet fighter jets were conducting routine training with several other aircraft off the aircraft carrier. NBC News reported that the two planes were in a holding pattern, preparing to land when they suddenly collided. One of the pilots safely ejected, but the other was killed. Three aircraft carriers from the U.S. and U.K. combined with a helicopter carrier from Japan to conduct exercises north of Taiwan in the same weekend that China made a record number of incursions into Taiwan's air defense zone. Citing the Japanese Defense Ministry, USNI reports that the carriers operating off the southwest coast of the Japanese prefecture of Okinawa were supported by ships from the Netherlands, Canada, and New Zealand in a fleet totaling 17 that was also pictured with British and American fighter jets overhead. The exercises were characterized by Japan's nationalist paper Sankai Shimbun as an effort to contain China, and that rhetoric may be in response to China's increasingly threatening incursions into Taiwan's air defense zone, with 93 such incidents occurring between Friday and Saturday, plus an additional 56 on Monday, which took the single-day record for most incursions, according to Reuters. The U.S. State Department's position over the weekend was that it was very concerned by China's provocative military activity near Taiwan, which is destabilizing, risks miscalculations, and undermines regional peace and stability, according to the BBC, and significant military activity in the area is ongoing. The United Kingdom carrier Strike Group 21, led by the HMS Queen Elizabeth, announced on Twitter on Monday that it had passed through the Luzon Strait on its way to Singapore, and the New Zealand Navy added that its own HMNZS Te Kaha would be transiting alongside it in the South China Sea. Elsewhere, just over a week ago, the UK's HMS Richmond made a rare voyage by a non-US ship through the Taiwan Strait, according to France 24. The military response from China came through its Eastern Theater Command, which said it sent air and naval forces to shadow the HMS Richmond and directed to leave the strait, according to CBS News. Taiwan News reports that the HMS Richmond went on to take part in exercises with the Vietnamese Navy frigate Din Tian Hong on Monday before heading to Singapore, the first ever at-sea naval activity between the two navies, according to USNI News. A U.S. Navy aircraft carrier strike group and a destroyer operated in the South China Sea on Wednesday, days after China introduced a law requiring foreign vessels to give notice before entering waters it claims as its own. Guided missile destroyer USS Benfold traveled within 12 nautical miles of Mischief Reef in the Spratly Islands, according to a U.S. Navy press release Wednesday, and the USS Carl Vinson, along with its strike group, also trained in the same region. 
According to Stars and Stripes, the USS Carl Vinson carries F-35C Lightning II stealth fighters and CMV-22B Osprey tilt rotor aircraft, and a spokesperson said it held maritime strike exercises and coordinated training between surface and air units on Monday. Chinese state mouthpiece The Global Times said China had responded to the USS Benfold by conducting whole process tracking and monitoring to warn it off, utilizing the naval and aerial forces of the Chinese People's Liberation Army. The U.S. Navy said its operation was lawful and reflected its intention to uphold freedom of navigation, while a statement from a PLA spokesperson said it was proof the U.S. is the biggest risk and peace breaker for the stability and peace in the region, according to the Global Times. China added that it has indisputable sovereignty over the Spratly Islands, in keeping with its self-declared nine-dash line boundary, which stretches hundreds of miles south and east from its most southerly province of Hainan, according to the BBC. Stars and Stripes notes that, as part of the sovereignty claim, China has reclaimed land and built military infrastructure in the Spratly since 2014, with the Council on Foreign Relations website explaining that construction involved ports, military installations, and airstrips on islands in the Spratlys and Paracels. It says Woody Island, in particular, has been militarized through the deployment of fighter jets, cruise missiles, and a radar system. Taiwan's Ministry of National Defense has reported a record 149 Chinese incursions into its air defense zone over four days. The single-day record of 56 entries occurred on Monday with 34 J-16 twin-jet multi-role fighters, four Su-30 twin-engine super-maneuverable fighters, two Y-8 anti-submarine planes, two KJ-500 airborne early warning and control planes, and 12 H-6 twin-engine bombers flying within Taiwan's southwest air defense zone in the daytime, and a further four J-16s doing the same on Monday night. The spike in incursions began Friday daytime, with 18 J-16 twin-jet multi-role fighters, four Su-30 twin-engine super-maneuverable fighters, two H-6 twin-engine bombers, and one Y-8 anti-submarine plane entering Taiwan's southwest air defense zone. A separate round of flights occurred on Friday night, involving 10 J-16s, two H-6s, and one KJ-500 airborne early warning and control plane, which took the total to 38, a record timed to coincide with celebrations of China's National Day. Taiwan scrambled jets, issued radio warnings, and deployed air defense missile systems to monitor the activity, according to its Ministry of National Defense. However, the following day, the incursions increased again to 39 in total. In the daytime on Saturday, the ministry said 20 planes made incursions, including 14 J-16s, 4 Su-30s, and 2 Y-8 anti-submarine planes. On Saturday night, a further 19 incursions took place, involving 12 J-16s, 6 Su-30s, and 1 KJ-500 airborne early warning and control plane. Sunday saw a slight reduction in numbers, with just 19 incursions. However, at the time, CNN noted the PLA Air Force flights were consistently going close to Pratas Island, which actually sits closer to Hong Kong than Taiwan. With no permanent residence, China could take control of the Pratas Islands whenever Chinese President Xi Jinping decides, said Yoshiyuki Ogasawara, professor of foreign studies at Tokyo University, cited by the diplomat in December. The islands are a potential flashpoint that now need to come to the attention of the U.S., Japan, and other democratic countries, he added. The UK, US and Australia have announced a security pact aimed at confronting China, whereby Australia will be provided with the technology to build nuclear-powered submarines for the first time, according to the BBC. Australia says it will abide by the Nuclear Non-Proliferation Treaty in not pursuing nuclear weapons, but the move could still indirectly spur the proliferation of nuclear weapons because of the technology it involves and the precedents it sets, according to The Guardian. The risk has been taken to allow Australia's currently diesel-powered navy to match China's technology, with the practical advantages of nuclear submarines being that they can move at faster speeds for longer and more stealthily than conventional ones, according to CNN, which adds that these submarines need to surface less often. But there is also a clear symbolic element to the technology transfer, with one U.S. official explaining to CNN that allowing Australia to be only the sixth country in the world to own nuclear submarines is, frankly, an exception to our policy in many respects. The pact, known as AUKUS, which also covers artificial intelligence, quantum technologies and cyber warfare, is designed as a response to China's military buildup in the Indo-Pacific, according to the BBC. A joint naval exercise between China and Russia has completed a near full circle of Japan, reinforcing tensions in the region, according to CNN. The Chinese warships included a Type 55 destroyer, 
a Type 55D destroyer, and two Type 54A frigates, while the Russian ships included two Udaloi-class destroyers, two Sidichai-class corvettes, and a Marshall Nidilin-class ship, according to the drive. The exercises have brought the charge of hypocrisy because China regularly condemns similar exercises by the U.S. in the Taiwan Strait as destabilizing. Two weeks ago, for instance, the Chinese military's Eastern Theater Command suggested a U.S. and Canadian transit could seriously jeopardize peace and stability in the Strait, according to CNN. Both those ships and now the Chinese and Russian vessels remained in international waters, but notably the Chinese and Russian ships took a route through the Tsugaru Strait, which is only around 12 miles wide at its narrowest point. That places them well within the area that can be claimed by a country under international law, albeit Japan only actually claims areas 3 miles from either shore. For more news animations and explainers, hit the subscribe and bell button to join the Tomo News family. Thanks for watching.